In this module, we're going to be talking about working with panels. Within Illustrator, there are several different panels within the interface. The toolbox panel, located over here at the left, holds most of the tools. The control panel, located up at the, here at the top under the menus, holds a lot of the settings for the current tool. And all of the other panels are located by default over here at the right. Any of these panels can be made into floating panels by simply grabbing on their title bar and dragging them away from the interface. The toolbox panel is unique. It has this expand contract arrows that you can use to switch the toolbox tools between a single column of tools and a double column. To redock a floating panel, Simply drag it over to the interface where you'd like to dock it to, and notice that this blue line appears, indicating that that is where it will be docked. Release the mouse, and the panel is docked to that edge. The control panel up here at the top can also be made floating. It can also be expanded and contracted in size by dragging here on its corner. The control panel will also change depending on the tool that is selected. For example, here if the type tool is selected, character and paragraph options are added to the control panel. If you are dragging a floating panel and you do not wish it to be docked to the edge of the interface, simply hold down the control key or the command key for Mac and it will be located where you drop it without docking it to the interface. If you want to cancel a movement of a panel, simply press the escape key and it will return to the last place it was located. The panel bar over here on the right shows up as icons and has the most common panels available by default. You can learn which panel is which by holding the mouse over the panel icon and seeing its name appear in a tooltip. Up here at the top is the button to expand the current panels. You can also expand individual panels by double clicking on their tab. Individual panels can also be pulled away from the panel bar and made floating like the color panel here. Dragging the tile bar will let you reposition the panels wherever you would like. They can also be contracted and expanded to a single icon using the double arrow here, key here. To close a panel, click on the X button up here in the corner. Any panel that is closed can be reopened using the window menu. All currently available panels are shown with the check marks here to the left. Most of the panels also have keyboard shortcuts here that you can use to access them. The panels are all listed here in alphabetical order with the exception of the control and tools panels which are listed here at the top. Panels can also be redocked within the, the current panel bar or redocked within a new panel group like so. This gives you a lot of control over how the panels are positioned and how they are organized. Panels can be dragged from one group to another by looking for the blue highlighting to appear. You can also expand a single panel by simply clicking on its icon. This is convenient if you only want to access a single setting. Within a single panel bar are several panel groups. These panel groups are separated by lines, and you can drag and add panels to an existing panel group, which lines up the tabs at the top of the panel. If you've made a bunch of changes, panels can also be docked beneath one another by dra dragging and dropping the tab within an expanded palette bar. This gives you a lot of control over how the panels are organized. The position of all the panels can be recorded and saved by using workspaces here at the top. The Essentials workspace is the default workspace. And if you want to reestablish the default, you can simply select the Essentials workspace and all of the default panel locations and positions are reestablished.